Hello friends, we are discussing the generation methods of high voltage. This is the third high DC voltage generation method called as voltage doubler circuit. The methods which we discussed earlier were half wave and full wave rectifier circuits. Both produces a DC voltage less than the AC maximum voltage. When higher DC voltages are needed, there is need to have a voltage doubler circuit or even if we cascade two voltage doubler circuits becomes the cascaded rectifier doubler circuits. The schematic diagram of the voltage doublers is shown in the figure. In voltage doubler circuit shown, the capacitor C1, the capacitor C1 is connected to the high voltage transformer. Now, how we can identify whether it's a low voltage or high voltage, it completely depends and shown by the winding. So the transformer is say T1. Transformer is say T1. Now, as the number of turns shown here, say N1 to primary and N2 to the secondary. So N1 is less than N2. So therefore, the secondary side is the high voltage side. And therefore, this can be referred as high voltage transformer. So there is a capacitor connected. I have shown two diagrams, similar two diagrams, so that we can simply understand the working of the voltage doubler circuit. So this capacitor C1 is charged through rectifier R1. Now when this rectifier R1 conducts, that is very, very important. During negative half cycle, during negative half cycle, when this side is positive with respect to this side, the rectifier conducts and therefore it charges the capacitor C1. So the value at this particular junction is V max. It means that charges to the value of V max. That charges to the value of V max. During negative half cycle, we get this polarity. We get this polarity. As the voltage of the transformer rises to positive V max during the next half cycle, the potential of the other terminal of C1 rises to a voltage of plus 2 V max. Now, how this happens, let us understand this. For that purpose, I just refer this particular side becomes positive and the other side becomes negative. Now the potential at this point is V max. Now during positive half cycle, the R1 doesn't conduct, it blocks and R2 conducts. When this R2 conducts, the potential which is available here is with respect to V max as negative positive on this side. So voltage with respect to the secondary winding is V max and the capacitor which is initially charged to the value of V max, the total voltage at this junction becomes V max plus V max is equal to 2 V max. So now the available voltage is 2 V max and for that cycle, R2 conducts and charges this capacitor C2. There is another capacitor which is placed here. So charges this capacitor C2 to the value of 2V max. 
as i said i am using two circuit diagrams here so if i just consider in first diagram i am getting the charging of this capacitor c1 charging of this capacitor c1 to the value of v max then i just use this second circuit diagram to represent this capacitor c2 so what i get in this capacitor c2 is that this particular side now becomes positive that is in next positive half cycle this is more positive than the other side now r1 doesn't conduct and this capacitor which is charged to the value of v max the potential which is available between this point and this point so the total voltage which is available is now calculated by applying kirchhoff's voltage law kvl so kvl says this capacitor has charged to the value of v max so the voltage which is available across capacitor is v max and the voltage of the secondary winding for positive half cycle is also v max so the voltage i just say this particular potential becomes twice of the v max twice of the v max now during this particular cycle r2 conducts and therefore charges the capacitor c2 to the value of 2 v max so the voltage which is now available across load resistance rl is 2 v max thus the capacitor c2 in turn is charged to this r2 that is rectifier r2 normally this dc output voltage on load will be less than 2 v max not exactly 2 v max but it is somewhat less than so depending on the time constant now the time constant is how much it is tau is equal to c2 into rl this capacitor and rl both are connected in parallel so the time constant for this is tau is equal to c2 into rl and the forward charging time constant the ripple voltage of these circuits will be about 2% ripple voltage that voltage which we have already understood in case of the half wave and full wave rectifier it is of 2% for rl upon r that is less than or equal to 10 and for x by r it is less than or equal to 0.25 where x and r are the reactance and resistance of the input transformer the rectifiers are rated to a peak inverse voltage of 2v max and the capacitors c1 and c2 must also have the same rating so if the load current is large the ripple is also more now let us consider next circuit to voltage doubler if two voltage doubler circuits are cascaded called as the cascaded voltage doubler circuit cascaded voltage doubler circuit where you can see there are two voltage doubler circuits are used so that the output from one doubler circuit is of 2 volt and as both are cascaded the complete output the result is 4v max so the voltage which is available across the load resistance is 4v max now we have discussed that rl is load resistance but exactly what is that load resistance is that load resistance is nothing but the insulation which we need to taste the insulation which we need to taste is basically the load resistance so let us understand this this cascaded voltage doublers are used when larger output voltages are needed without charging the input transformer voltage level or without changing any of the input voltage level to this transformer a typical voltage doubler circuit which is we are which we are considering and its input and output waveforms can be plotted the rectifiers now we have R1 and R2. So R1 conducts. R1 conducts. So it is similar to the previous circuit. So R1 conducts during negative half cycle, and R2 conducts 
during positive that is during next positive half cycle which is very very important to understand so the rectifiers r1 and r2 with transformers t1 and the capacitors c1 and c2 produce an output voltage of 2v in the same way as described for the above two circuits so when r1 conducts the voltage which is available across capacitor c1 is v max during next positive half cycle the r1 doesn't conduct but at the same time the potential across secondary winding of the t1 transformer and the capacitor c1 is v and hence the total voltage which is available is 2 times v max this circuit is duplicated and connected in series or cascade to obtain further voltage doubling to 4v t is an isolating transformer to give an insulation for 2v max since the transformer t2 is at a potential of 2v max so the voltage across c3 is again v the total voltage across capacitor c4 with respect to this point is 2v now this 2v plus this 2v the total voltage becomes 4v so this 2v and this 2v so here this v is the voltage across capacitor c3 and 2v is the voltage which is available across c4 and c3 so the total voltage or we can say that the total voltage becomes how much 2v plus 2v that is of 4v the voltage di distribution along the rectifier string r1 r2 r3 r4 is made uniform by having capacitors of c1 c2 c3 and c4 of equal values but if you change the values of the capacitors that will change the values of the voltages and that will not be equal to exactly equal to 4v so to get the value of that voltage of 4v that is 2v across this cascaded circuit of t2 transformer and 2v across the transformer t1 we need to keep these values same so we have capacitor c2 which is placed here capacitor c1 which is placed here then there are two more capacitors which are placed here as c4 and c3 c4 and c3 so the arrangement may be extended to give even 6v 8v and so on by repeating further stages with suitable isolating transformers in all the voltage doubler circuits if valves are used and the filament transformers have to be suitably designed and insulated as all the cathodes will not be at the same potential from ground the arrangement becomes cumbersome if more than 4v is needed with the cascaded steps now let us see the output which we are getting that is plotted in between voltage and time the output from the first rectifier that is first voltage doubler circuit is this much which is plotted here so that is the ac input voltage given ac input voltage which is given the ac output voltage waveform with capacitor filter which is which is shown in this waveform number 2 and the dc output voltage waveform with capacitor filter is shown here so this is the circuit where we have this as input voltage that starts from zero value this is the voltage which is which can be referred as v max and this is the value of the voltage which can be referred as 2 v max so that's all with this introduction to the voltage doubler circuit and cascaded voltage doubler circuit with the waveform we will see next topic last topic related to high voltage dc generation that is voltage multiplier circuit in next class in next video thank you